I just can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have to you. When I look in the Bible, I just have a revival, for He made my life anew. He said, if I believe Him, I'd be sure to receive Him, and yes, I know it's true. Cause now I can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have to you. Well, Peter walked on water, and Lazarus from the grave. The lame man walked with the bed in hand, the sins the Lord forgave. But no greater walk could I ever find than the life he gave that now is mine. He made my sin stained heart to shine, and I am so amazed that I just can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have to you. When I look in the Bible, I just have a revival, for He made my life anew. He said, if I believe Him, I'd be sure to receive Him, and yes, I know it's true. Cause now I can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have to you. That the God of all creation would care enough for me. To send his son to die and rise again to set me free. While the lame may walk, the dumb may talk, the blind may see again. But I'll never get over the weight on his shoulder for bearing all my sins. I just can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have to you. When I look in the Bible, I just have a revival, for He made my life anew. He said, if I believe Him, I'd be sure to receive Him, and yes, I know it's true. Cause now I can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior, can't quite imagine why I'd be in His favor. I can't quite describe what a wonderful Savior I have. Good morning, everyone. Are you awake yet? <laughs> Good. If you weren't, hopefully you are now. <laughs> next week, I just wanted to announce that next week, starting at what time, Terry? Before. Yeah, before church. Sometime before church, we're gonna have. We're going to start the, the refreshments again, um, and Terry is, has been so kind to take that on. Um, so um, starting next week, uh, we will do that. And so come early enough that we can greet each other and have uh, a little cup of coffee and, and a donut. Oh, donut and maybe a plate of cookies too, she said. So... <laughs> Don't eat too much breakfast. <laughs> okay. We are um, grateful to have each and every one of you here today. But I think that um, this is maybe the last Sunday for some of you. Uh, you'll be taken off somewhere else, wherever it's cold. <laughs> or at least cooler than here. And I understand some places still have snow, too. So... Um, I think I'll stay here. Thank you. We're going to be 105 degrees today. Oh, good! <laughs> Some of us the warmer the better! Hey, Sam, how was the trip to Hawaii? The trip to Hawaii was wonderful. And thank you all for the prayers. And we had a safe trip there, safe trip back, and um, had a great time when I was there. I was only there for a week. But that's, that's plenty to see that particular island. So next time I go, I may go to a different place. So, so how are Lanny and Ruth Lanny and Ruthann should be coming back shortly. Um, today, I think, yes. So um, they will be back, uh, hopefully, they'll come back next week. We'll see. Hello. The Big Island. 
Where all the oh, where they make all the coffee. Yeah, the cone. Yes, the cone coffee. <laughs> and it was wonderful. And I brought some back, of course. But not for me. <laughs> no, I didn't know that you liked it, so. Oh, cone and coffee. Oh. <laughs> All right, we want to remember all of those who are leaving um, and going elsewhere. We want to remember them in our in our prayers as they travel uh, so that the Lord would grant them safe traveling mercies and safe journey. And for all those who are still sick, those who are recovering from illnesses, we want to keep those in mind as well. And we want to keep on remembering um, the fellow at the front desk, Kevin, and his wife, Pam, um, they're still struggling with, with her cancer, and we just want to pray that the Lord will have his way uh, in, in their whole life. And he's dedicated to the Lord, and he's dedicated to her, and so uh, we want to keep them in our prayers as well. And anyone else, Lord, uh, anyone else that we have that is in need of prayer, I'm not sure of anybody else at the moment. Um, so, uh, if there's anybody that has anything that you want to speak, uh, I, or, yes, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to have you pray for uh, Polly. She's still having um, issues with her heart. Polly? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And I believe there's a basket on the back. A table there that has uh, prayer requests that if you want to write some prayer requests we will be happy to pray for them um, this week so <clears throat> let's uh, let's stand and bow our heads for prayer and then remain standing for the first song if you will please our heavenly father we are so grateful for your many, many blessings. We're thankful, Lord, that you have brought us back to this place. We're thankful that you watch over us. Father, we just dedicate this service to you this day so that we can go from this place with a better feeling in our hearts, a better feeling in our minds, about who you are and about what we are to do in this life. For Lord, it's not just about coming to church and having fellowship together. Your word tells us that we must go and to tell others about you. Help each one of us, Lord, to do our part in winning others for you. Pray just now that you would be with all of those who are Traveling this week, pray, Lord, that you would be with them, help them on their journey. Lord, help them to have a safe journey. Lord, we pray that you would be with all of those who are still sick. Be with Polly, Lord. Pray that you would touch her. We pray, Father, that you would just now be with each one that we don't even know with all the unspoken requests, Lord. All those who are, have been requested on, on the prayer request sheets, pray, Lord, that you would touch those. And I pray, too, Lord, that you would especially put your arms around Kevin and Pam. Pray, Lord, that you would touch them. Pray, too, Lord, that you would be with Pastor Chuck as he brings us the message later in the service. Be with each one of us, Lord, and help us to learn more about you, to live for you each day. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This morning we're going to sing, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. To prepare us for the service today. Amen. 
take the offering, please. I'm going to sing this song for the offertory. It's called His Strength is Perfect. Today I'd like to, like to uh, dedicate this song to our friend out at the front desk, Kevin, and his wife Pam, who, as you know, are struggling with cancer. And we want to keep them in our prayers for sure. The song is also my theme song. Because of what I went through with my wife, and how many of you have lost loved ones and spouses, but his strength carries us through.
No cane, you notice. I better run to the gas station, though. Thank you, because I did there today to stop for gas. And a lady was coming over there. I was coming over here. She ran up the door and opened it for me. <laughs> and I figured, we'll take your cane all the time and use it, you know. <laughs> Get that door open for me all the time. Well, welcome. Well, good morning. And welcome to worship back together. Yeah, together. Wasn't that song a uh, wonderful Sam thing? Uh, just a great song. Uh, just so. And uh, the strength is perfect for us. And that's what we want to talk about today, in a sense, uh, as we get into our message for today. We think about our third in our series of our series entitled Faith Works, that today we want to talk about in the book of James, faith that keeps us hopeful. Faith that keeps us hopeful. No matter what happens in our life, no matter what uh, happens to us in our life, it's faith that keeps us hopeful, both in the good times and in the tough times. And that's essential to life. You know, a lot of things that maybe you and I can get by with and, and we might not need and we might wonder about if we need it or not. But one thing we need in this life is an essential picture of faith for us in this life, both in the good times and the bad times, like I said. You know, no human being can handle uh, an enormous amount of strength and frustration, delays, and pain. Uh, some of us can handle that, and we can go through it. But if we don't have hope in this life, it's useless. If we don't have hope in this life, it's useless to try to balance life. It's, if we don't have hope in this life, it, it is a a struggle for us in this life. And so James said something, a very short verse that we're going to use as the basis of our whole meditation today uh, that simply goes like this. In James chapter 5, verse 8, he says, You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Let me read that for you again. And you, I think you see it on the board here. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Keep your hopes up high. Don't give up. And ask you, how are you doing with that? How are you doing with that this morning? Are your hopes high? Don't you feel like giving up? No, your hopes are high and good. Well, it's not always that way, is it? Sometimes we have difficult times. Sometimes it feels like hope is like a like a balloon losing air, slowly but surely. And we have hope, but it's getting dimmer. We have hope, but it's getting smaller. We have hope, but it's getting down. And so we want to learn today about what hope really is. What you are going through in this present life is cannot be compared to the greatness of God and you with David in your hope, hope in your life. But today I want to challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you to have a faith that works. A faith that works because it is filled with hope. And you can move forward through the tough times and you can be thankful in the good times in your life as you live out that faith in the Lord. Okay, then let's look at the book of James. And under six points I want you to think of, Six reasons why you can't have hope in your life. Now, point number one, we have hope because we know that difficult times will not last. We have hope that difficult times will not last. When I started the ministry a few years ago, I, well, it was many years ago, uh, I had a mentor pastor, Reverend Elmer O. Cook. He was a good old guy. And he was a decent man. But once in a while, he had a phrase he would use with you. A phrase that was not biblical, but this phrase he would use. One phrase that he used was, this too shall pass. But there was, I gotta tell you about another phrase he used, by the way. He had an Arab phrase, and it went like this. 
Once you let the camel's nose in a tent, soon the rest will follow. <laughs> That's a whole other sermon, by the way. When I figure out that that tent thing me out. But today when I this too shall pass. And I've repeated that phrase many times to myself because it tells me something about no matter what I'm going through in my life, this too shall pass. But whatever circumstance I'm going through in this life, this too shall pass. The right problem I'm going through in this life is temporary. No problem comes to stay, it comes to pass. It passes through your life. Even a lifelong chronic problem you're not going to take with you into eternity. Amen. And so it comes to not to stay, but pass. Now if we think about that, we think of the problems that we have in life, our problems are only temporary. They're going to pass in light of eternity. They're pretty short and manageable in light of eternity. You can handle a lot in your life, and in the end, it has a purpose and a meaning, but in the end, it's over. James 5.10 says, Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now James said, remember, James remembers here the, world, the stories of the prophets. Listen to what he says again. Brothers and sisters, an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke the name of the Lord. When you look at the prophets, they had a lot of problems, they had a lot of trouble, they had a lot of difficulties, but they put up with anything, they went through everything, and they never quit once. Let me read that, repeat that again. When you look at the prophets of old, they had three things. They put up with everything, they went through everything, and they never once quit. Reminds us of our life. When we go through struggles in life, we do the same thing. We need to put up with everything, we need to go through everything, and we need to never quit. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, that is, it is for a short time, but what is unseen is eternal, that is, lasts forever. So when we go through our life, we want to increase our hope and change our perspective. So you hear that? If you increase your hope, it changes your perspective of everything. Looking here and now, Start looking to God, His Word, and His Word, and the future. Stop focusing on what is temporary, and focus on what is eternal. Second thing, because we have hope, because God will use it for our good. God will use it for our good. James 4, 2 and 7, James writes following, Consider your pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and perseverance finishes finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. That, that's the good that God is doing in your life to the bad that comes in your life. Let me read, repeat that again. That's the good that comes in your life to the bad that comes in your life. He is helping you to become fully developed in patience and endurance and strong in character. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, I tell you something. I have trouble with that verse. Listen again. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us a glory that far outweighs verse. 
outweighs them all. What could be light and momentary in our troubles and difficulties? Why does he say light and momentary? Think about this. Let's say when you die, you go into heaven. In heaven, you're in eternity. In heaven, you're in your timelessness. And you think about this. What was I thinking of? What was I worried about? What was that situation in my life that bothered me so much? Because in heaven, you see, it's going to be momentary. In heaven, it will be just like a flash. It's over and done. And we spend a lot of time looking at our difficulties and worrying about them and getting frustrated about them and perpetuating them by continually worrying about them over a period of time, over days, over months, over years. It's all momentary anyway. God has taken care of it. God has taken care of us. And God takes care of our problems. So the problems we go through are but momentary. And they're used for our good to teach us at that point. But then they're gone. Three, we have hope because we know getting angry, irritated, frustrated doesn't help. Someone once asked uh, my wife Connie, do you get, uh, wake, you wake up grumpy in the morning? She says, no, I let him sleep. I need to the water. I try to tell jokes, she says, give me the water. Thing. You know, if you ever think about anger, or irritation, or frustration, we do that, we get angry, we get frustrated, irritated, but it only makes the situation worse. The more angry you get, the more angry you get. The more frustrated you get, the more frustrated you get. The more irritable you get, the more irritable you get. It just repeats itself over and over again. And did you ever get in an argument with somebody and say, like your spouse or somebody, and you say, I'm in the middle of this argument, thinking in your mind, I'm in the middle of this argument, and I'm going to win. I don't care what he says, I don't care what she says, I'm going to win. And so, we don't care what they say, it's you're going to, you're going to win. You see, that's what argument does, that's what uh, crisis does to us. It irritates us, it angers us, and if we don't get over it, repeats itself over and over again. That's why James wrote in 1920, Dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow, slow, slow to be angry, become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Getting angry, upset, getting cranky. It's hard to be angry and hopeful at the same time. James 5.9 says, Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Meaning this, God knows when we get angry. God knows when we get irritated. God knows we get frustrated. He knows the circumstance. He knows the issue. He knows what we're dealing with. James hits in the head when he says, life gets irritated, and there are times that we, there are times that we don't let go of that difficulty. It depletes, anger only depletes the problem we're going through. So, when we think about this, Help. Faith helps us to have hope. Have, faith helps us to have hope in these three things. First of all, it's temporary. Second, the problem is uh, helps uh, 
uh, God will use the problem for our good, and the fourth thing, we get irritated and it doesn't work for us in this life. Right? This is the fourth thing. Fourth thing, we have hope because Jesus is coming back someday. Jesus is coming back someday and we're all be over. The reason for hope and it's going to happen is Jesus coming back someday. James 5, 8 says, again, uh, you too be patient and stand firm because because the Lord is, is near. Jesus is coming back. When? I don't know when. We don't know when. Only the Father knows when. But Jesus is coming back. You know the date and the time. No, you don't know the date and time. Anybody, get, anybody ever tells you that the date and the time, go out and for dinner. Go out for dinner. Because they don't know. No person knows the date or the time. For example, a few years ago, I think some guy said, uh, like January 10th or something, the world's going to end. Well, I knew that would be a safe date. The thing I want to do, I won't be canceled. But look, he's going to come, come back. No man knows the date or the time. But you can know that God is, keeps you safe and secure in his care because he knows the time. Jesus is coming back someday. The fifth thing, which leads us from, the, from coming back someday, is we have hope because we know this is not the end of the story. The final chapter has not yet happened. The final chapter has not yet happened. We put our hope in God, not yourself, not your retirement, not your job, not in politics, not in the media, but hope in God and God alone because he knows the end of the story because he knows the end of the story we do not hold we do not know what the future holds but we know who holds the future Amen. Jane reminds us that everything may fall apart in Job's life he has a section here this is what he says as in James 5.11, as you know, we count as blessed those who have been persevered, who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. You know the story of Job. Very quickly, Job lost everything. Everything. His family, his possessions, his income, his livelihood. He lost everything in the first few chapters of Job, of Job, Book of Job. He loses everything. It looks like it's over. It looks like he's desperate. It's like at everything is gone. And he goes through all these chapters in that book, uh, the 40 chapters, I think, in the Book of Job. And he goes through all the chapters and they try to remind him what's going on. His wife says, curse God and die. Nice wife, um, and uh, his, his friends. His friends say, "Do it. You got to do something. This is not working, Job." And Job maintains a faith in God that gives him hope all the way through the book. And then he even he even questions God as he's going through. His hope gets pretty dim. He questions God, and God says to him, who made the wind blow? Who took, who took care of creation? And all these things, and Job says, well, I guess you did, God. And God says, yes, I did. And then in the end, he says, and I'll do it for you one more time, because you've been faithful. Restored his crops, restored his grain, restored his livelihood, restored his family, even better than it was at the beginning of the book. What's the picture? The picture is God, God brought all things together for him in the end because God cares, because God loves at last detail. You see, God did that for Job. Do you trust that he will do it for you? 
Do you trust that you'll, he'll take care of you, like Job? Every detail of your life is in God's hands, because God is a God of details, and God is a God who loves you in your life. Will God do that for you? Yes, He will. He did that to get to, to save Job, and He'll do that for you in your life. Did you get that? You can look forward to the end of your story, because your story is God's story working in you, and God's story is His story, how He loves you also. And finally, James points to what we call the big one, the final one. We have hope because someday we'll be rewarded. And rewarded here does not be like monetary rewarding. Rewarding means that we are blessed beyond all imagination. It'd be like you walking to Elon Musk and telling him you want to buy Twitter and handing him an extra billion extra money. That's what we are. We are blessed. Blessed beyond even our imagination. Listen to what the scripture says. James 1.12 Blessed is the one who perseveres in the trial because having stood the test, the person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised for him who loves him. Listen to what it says. You will receive the crown of life. First think close Corinthians 9.25. Everyone who competes the games goes into strict training. I do not, they do get it to go. They do get to get a crown that will not last. What we, by the way, I got my tongue in front of my eye tooth. I couldn't see what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> they do it to get a crown of life, but it will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Amen. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. First Peter 1.16 in this, in all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Yes, we'll suffer. Yes, we go through trials. In the end, we get the crown of life. In the end, we get the victory. Romans 8, 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory to be revealed to us. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory revealed to us. The glory revealed to us. The greatness revealed to us. Romans 8.18 in the Message Bible goes like this. Listen to this for a moment. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between present times, hard times, and the coming of good times. The created world itself can hardly wait what's coming next. Everything in creation is more, is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment in the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the glory, the joyful anticipation deepens. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. That's faith. That's faith in the hard times. That's faith in the good times. That's faith when you know the answer. That faith when you know the answer. The joyful anticipation deepens. So let me ask you, are you putting your hope, what are you putting your hope in? Are putting your hope in something or someone in his life? The stock market, up and down, good and bad, up and down. 
are putting yourself or putting your hope in some politician, that chance you're going to find an answer <laughs> in the government, in Social Security. By the way, uh, I'm now on Social Security. I love that title, Social Security. All I do is get a check. That gives me Social Security, but I get a check. I never figured it out. A movie star, a sports figure, an idea, a philosophy, a sudden change in circumstance that you know will make you happy. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in Him. Have faith in Him. Believe in Him. Trust in Him above all things. Yeah. Like the song says, God will make a way. Amen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side with love and strength for each new day. God will make a way. God will make a way. That's faith. Faith that works. Faith that keeps giving me and making me whole. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are hopeful each day what you promise to do for us in this life. Although we go through struggles at times, and sometimes they're lasting, lasting all our life, we know that in the end, the glory will come. We enter into the kingdom and be free from all harm, struggle, and pain, and free from all that would hurt us in this life, free in your name, with you in your presence, in glory. We thank you, Jesus, for your love for all of us, that makes our hope possible, our hope in you. For he went to the cross, a hopeless situation, to give us hope to die for the world and die for each of us, that we might have hope and promise in the future. And when you rose, you guaranteed that future, that future in heaven, that future now, as we live out your promise, as we live out hope that we have in you. Bless us, Lord, and seek to live out that hope each day in your promises and love for us. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and your grace unto you. The Lord lift his, lift his power upon you and give you his peace. Go in peace. Be hopeful in the Lord. Amen. Amen.